Due to the content of this presentation, parental guidance is recommended to 16 years. The inception of Hell's Angels Denmark marked a pivotal moment in the country's counterculture and biker history. Emerging in the early 80s, the founding of this notorious chapter reflected a unique fusion of rebellious spirit, camaraderie, and violence. Inspired by the original Hell's Angels, the Danish chapter quickly carved its own distinct identity, embodying the ethos of freedom, independence, and a disdain for societal norms, becoming the most violent biker chapter in Europe. Hell's Angels Denmark became a formidable presence, captivating attention for both its enigmatic allure and its controversial and brutal methods, making them the most violent biker chapter in Europe. They soon took control over the criminal underworld in Denmark and expanded to all the Nordic countries, something that would later spark the Great Nordic Biker War, the deadliest biker war in European history. The whole started out with HSN2 in Denmark. And even if it's not HSN2 that sits in monopoly in Denmark, what angår rocker milieu, so it's still the ones who have hele den her udforming af, hvordan den danske underverden er endt med at blive i dag. Altså, det er jo et andet sted hurtigt af det hele. This is the story of the beginning and formation of Hell's Angels Denmark, a journey that intertwines brotherhood, rebellion, violence, murder, and the roaring thunder of motorcycles. This is Biker History with Magnus. But before we begin, remember to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel a lot, and blah, blah, blah. In the early 1970s, the emergence of the first biker gangs in Denmark reflected a response to the tumultuous times characterized by the ongoing Vietnam War and the lingering influence of flower power. During this period, two prominent youth groups, Squares and the Hippies, stood out with their distinct identities. However, for some young individuals, neither group resonated, and a desire to rebel against societal norms emerged for some teens and young men. They sought something entirely different. I had not much to offer for authority and authority. They were forvirret and frustrated. And in a biker milieu, bike milieu så kunde vi då ge mer utspel på sina förelser och kunde få komma till byar. Så kunde vi ta avstånd till samhället samtidigt som de hade ett brorskap som vi följde sig till samhället. They wanted to rebel and anything provoking would do. Det bolar massor av tatoveringar. Är det något som har en särskild betydning? Eller är det provokation? Vad var det? provokation. Er der noget provokerende i en tatovering? Ja, det er der jo. Altså folk, de, altså, er ikke, ikke tatovering. Det ser bare godt ud. Der er noget provokerende i et hagekors. Ja, folk kan ikke lide det. Ikke? Er det rigtigt? Er der noget politisk i det? Nej, jeg har ikke en skid. Der er ingen hagekors. Der er ikke noget politisk i det. Inspired by the American biker movies of the 1960s and early 1970s, which romanticized the biker lifestyle, these outsiders found an outlet in forming small biker gangs. Get your motor running Head out on the highway Engaging in mischief and many of them adopting small-time petty criminal lifestyles. Their attire was dirty clothes, seldom showering, and they embraced anything anti-establishment as a form of rebellion. This biker culture evolved, with young boys and men in their late teens and early twenties becoming increasingly visible in the Danish landscape. I slutningen af 60'erne og begyndelsen af 70'erne, hvor vi havde de vilde engle, der havde næsten hver en by i hele landet sin egen knallerbande. Og de der knallerbander, man kan se på et eller andet plan, de havde sådan lidt de vilde engle som forbilleder. De havde set om dem, når de havde set noget om dem i fjernsynet. De vilde engle. Or the Wild Angels in English was the first Danish attempt at becoming Hell's Angels in the late 60s and early 70s, taking their name from the 1966 movie The Wild Angels, starring Peter Fonda. No preach. Not children of God, but hell's angels. Yeah. Led by the charismatic Bjorn Anderson, they were influenced by the hippies and therefore not angel material. 
A rivalry developed among different gangs, manifesting in attempts to humiliate each other through childish acts, such as stealing vests and displaying them in their clubhouse as trophies. Væggene er pyntet med trofæer, som rockerne har erobret fra andre klubber, ofte under blodige slagsmål. At that time, vests were simple, often created with markers on the back of jackets or vests. In an expression of disdain and a deliberate provocation against Danish society, they wore Nazi symbols and helmets, despite not endorsing the ideology. Instead, it served as fuck off to everyone. De første knallert band, der udvikler sig til MC-klubber i midten af 70'erne. De kalder sig selv for dirty klubber. Det handler om et opgør med pænheden og den borgerlige samfundsmoral. In this 1970s interview, the biker gang Filthy Few unabashedly boasts about their intentions and desires. Har I ikke en trykker? Folk er lidt bange for jer. Det skal de også have lov til at være. Det skal de være. De skal være bange for os. Fordi det er vores protest mod samfundet. Ligesom flower power, de kommer og gav dig en blomst og en blomst og en blomst. Det gør vi ikke. Det kommer med vores, hele vores provokerende værre måde. The day following this interview, three members face arrest for a violent assault. Jørgen Jynge Nielsen, a former Hells Angels member, reflects on the biker lifestyle, emphasizing how bikers, or rocker in Danish, lived day by day without much planning. This lifestyle was a deliberate rebellion against their parents' generation, who adhered to a daily work routine, leaving their children with ample unsupervised time, fostering a departure from conformity. In their quest for rebellion, They embraced elements designed to scare and provoke mainstream society. Nielsen notes that during that time they were rather narrow-minded, highlighting that wearing glasses disqualified individuals from joining his moped gang, the Nomads. Different groups held contrasting views on substances, with some favoring cannabis and others leaning towards alcohol, creating a divide. The Galloping Goose was the potheads, while the filthy few advocated for alcohol. This split laid the initial groundwork for the first biker conflict in Denmark between Hells Angels and Bullshit MC. Two of the most formidable figures in this biker gang, Zulu and Mackerel, went from being brothers to become mortal enemies in a very short time. Zulu, alias René Emil Søltoft, blev nemlig den første præsident for Hells Angels, og Makrallen, alias Henning Norbert Knudsen, bliver præsident for Bullshit. Wearing simple back tags, they fiercely defended them, using violence to protect against other gangs attempting to humiliate them by snatching it. Den gruppe, eller de personer, der tager dit rygmærke, de, de, de stjæler både for manden og for klubben. De er bare de bang, bang, så... While they frequently engaged in skirmishes, these altercations were typically minor fistfights, that seldom escalated into tragedies. However, in 1977, a pivotal moment occurred when members of Nørre Benton attacked a rivaling club at their clubhouse. This marked the first time shots were fired in the Danish biker world, resulting in the death of a Norrmindy gang member. Ikke alene bliver Kim skudt, men mens han ligger og udånder, inden politiet ankommer, der bliver han mishandlet på den måde, at hans tænder bliver slået ned i halsen på ham af et eller andet stumt instrument, som man ikke finder ud af hvad. The shooter was sentenced to only two years in prison after he managed to convince the court that it was an accidental shot that went off. Politiet har skærpet beredskabet blandt andet omkring nomadernes klublokaler på Islands Brygge, hvor opgøret fandt sted. Her opsøgte Nørre Mindegruppen nomaderne. De havde oversaget jagtgeværer med og opgøret endte med, at begge parter åbnede ild, og at en fra Nørre blev dræbt, og to fra den anden gruppe såret. This incident marked the beginning of violent wars among bikers in Denmark, though it initially occurred in an isolated location without civilians present. The situation would soon change, as within six days, the entire country would become aware of the evolving nature of the gang environment, with the occurrence of a second death. In a quest for revenge, Another attack unfolds, this time at a discotheque filled with hundreds of young people. 
This incident claims the life of Johnny Jensen from the Filthy Few, the close confidant of Mackerel. Johnny Jensen blev dræbt den 11. november. Han blev 18 år. Mackerel var Johnnys bedste ven i motorcykelsjakket Filthy Few. Da Johnny i søndags blev bisat fra Bispebjerg Krematorium, mødte vennerne op for at tage afsked. I hvert fald dem af dem, der ikke er eftersøgt eller sidder i fængsel. Following this escalation, the groups opt to arm themselves with guns, a process made easy in Denmark during that period. Acquiring rifles and ammunition required no permit or background check by the police. I midten af 70'erne var der jo ikke rockerbander. Vi brugte ofte lidt humoristisk ord i politiet, at det var bare almindelig husholdningskriminelle. Men det er en ideologi, der kommer fra USA, og der kom Hells Angels konceptet også fra. As a response to the violence, Various gangs begin to merge and organize against their rivals, resulting in an increase in their size and power. The merger of the biker gangs, Galloping Goose, Dirty Angels, Nomads and Iron Skull, now forms the largest biker gang in Denmark, the union boasting no less than 120 members. Ironically, it was the government that gave the union its headquarter in Titan Street for free in what they naively believed would help downgrade the violence between the biker gangs. Instead, it later became a powering symbol of Hell's Angels' dominance in Denmark and later the Nordic countries. The biker gangs' intimidation grew to the extent that they now could brazenly walk into shops, grab a case of beer and exit without encountering resistance from owners or a call to the police. During a European road trip, one of the Union's bikes breaks down, but they got help to fix the bike by a Hells Angels chapter nearby. The encounter with this enigmatic club, previously only known to them through magazines and the silver screen, leaves a profound impression, prompting the Union to set their sights on becoming Hells Angels. To check if they are Angels material, Hells Angels sends representatives from Hamburg to check them out. Four Mercedes biler med en gruppe tyskere er på vej fra Hamburg til København. De er alle medlemmer af Hells Angels internationale broderskab og skal undersøge, om der er grundlag for en afdeling i Danmark. I 1978 har fire af de stærkeste danske rockergrupper sluttet sig sammen for at blive Hells Angels. Danskerne har forberedt et stort party for de tyske engle, det udvikler sig i løbet af aftenen til et slagsmål i klubhuset. Men næste morgen tager tyskerne afsted igen med hilsenen See you motherfuckers, og to år senere er danskerne blevet optaget som Hells Angels. The union now became official hangarounds of Hells Angels, meaning that they are in the consideration for becoming members. However, not all hangaround clubs end up becoming fully patched members. To align themselves with the red and white colors, the Union shed their dirty clothes, begin taking regular showers, and adopt a more presentable appearance, a departure from their earlier protests and rebellion style. However, to be serious contenders, the key members recognize the need for an internal restructuring. Of the 120 members, some more committed than others, and discrepancies in alignment with Hell's Angels' expectations 80% of the members are expelled or depart, leaving a core group of only 19 members. Her sidder så de folk, der som Hells Angels forløber en unionen, får stor betydning for udviklingen af det skandinaviske MC-miljø. Det er folk som Jørgen Knudsen, alias Carlo, Ben Svane Nielsen, Blondi, Jens Peter Christensen, Smukke Jens, Henrik Nielsen, Dirty, Søren Hullihård Langballe og Jesper Hamster Grue, René Emil Søltoft, Zulu, Hansen, alias Hansi. Many of these members would later go on to do long prison terms for violence, drug trafficking, and murder. In fact, the Danish Hells Angels have the infamous record of the most murders by any Hells Angels chapter in Europe. Så længe at, uh, jeg tror det er syv af dem, der sidder fængslet for drab, det er tre for dobbelt drab, fem for drabsforsøg, to for vold med døden til følge, 50 for andre voldsforbrydelser. Altså 50 tilfælde af voldsforbrydelser findes der derudover. Plus en masse sager med narkohandel og så videre. Så må man jo sige, at medlemmerne af denne forening selv har givet anledning til den omtale. Early in 1979, the union become prospects of Hells Angels. A first in the Nordic countries, called MC Denmark, meaning that unless you fuck up, 
you will soon become Hell's Angels. They were no longer a simple biker gang. They were now prospects of the biggest biker club in the world. Det er klart, det at blive Hell's Angels, det, det forpligter, at man ligesom har et ansvar for det, det enkelte land. Ikke? Og det er jo klart, de skulle ligesom øh, bevise, at de havde skal jeg ikke sige styr på, eller at de ligesom havde tjek på, hvad der foregik i deres land. Ikke? Og der var ikke nogen klub, der kunne tro dem. Things now became much more serious for the New Angels prospects with rules, a club fee and a reputation to live up to. They would now have to assert their dominance through violence to become the top dog in both the Danish biker world but also in the Danish criminal underworld. They had to get rid of their Nazi symbols and KKK clothes which the Danes thought were cool but the American representatives visiting them were not impressed. Ved den første kontakt til USA, hvor, hvor der var et par af os, der sad med white power, tror jeg på, og der kom amerikanerne ind og sagde, hvorfor er I det lort på? Og der sad vi helt målløs alle sammen og tænkte, det troede vi, de rendte rundt i alle sammen derovre, og havde, havde masser med Ku Klux Klan at gøre, hvad ved jeg. Så forklarer de, at så, når de er færdige med, med jøderne, så tager de nægerne, og når de er færdige med dem, så tager de indianerne, og når de er færdige med dem, så tager de bikerne. De kan ikke lide andre end sig selv. Så det blev ligesom lagt på hylden på det tidspunkt. Macro had left the union earlier after an internal conflict with some of the other members and joined their rivals the filthy few. But when MC Denmark start their cleanup, Mackerel's filthy few is forced to get rid of their colors. Shortly after, to counter MC Denmark's dominance, the Norager's Mindy gang and former filthy few members merge under the name Bullshit MC, electing Mackerel as their president. The new logo shows a bull taking a dump on a toilet, a mark which, according to the members, should signal that it wasn't all violence and destruction. Ellers er det er et marksyndrom i Amerika, og det tror jeg også, de glæder om til her landet, ikke? But bullshit was a local Danish club, not an international club with rules and puppet gangs supporting them, and they continued to operate very much like they had before, like a biker gang, and were in many ways much less sophisticated than the angels. Bullshit var et rigtigt lokalt øh, dansk øh, fænomen, øh, og øh, de optrædte øh, betydeligt mere uorganiseret og mere sådan, om man så må sige, på øh, gammeldags bøllemanere, øh, end, øh, end HR'erne har gjort. Bullshit moved into Christiania, a small neighborhood where cannabis was openly sold and took over much of the business there. The violence the New Angels prospects brought would epitomized in their mantra, also used internally, because after becoming prospects, a violent incident would lead to an internal conflict where the member Soren Langball was kicked to death by his biker brothers. Soren's behavior was erratic and violent, and he often ended up in brawls with his brothers. And not being the biggest guy of the members, he would often use a kitchen knife to protect himself when in trouble, wielding it threateningly in the clubhouse towards other members. He also accidentally shot his dog in the head with a gun, but the dog survived only for him to beat the dog to death with a hammer a few days later, something that shocked his other club members. But more seriously, he tried to hook up with some of the other members' wives, a big no-no in the biker environment. However, it was while being at an H.A. party in Holland that things really got out of hand and Soren, with his actions, signed his own death warrant. While partying with Dutch, British and German angels in Holland, several girls in their late teens were raped and beaten, with one 19-year-old girl even being set in a pillory while being brutally molested. Der er nogle af de danske rockere, der går forrest i det, der bliver beskrevet som en massevoldtægt af en, en, en hollandsk kvinde. En af dem, der bliver anklaget, det er sådan et uh, ungt medlem, som går under navnet Søren Hul i Hår. Nielsen says that it was predominantly the Dutch Hells Angels involved, who he called a little rough, along with their own member Søren. Søren were one of the perpetrators of this, but reports also included other Danes involved in the rape, but none of them were prosecuted, and Soren was released after nine hours. Soren 
Soren's behavior complicates things for the Danes, but no witnesses come forward and Soren goes free. The German and British angels are far from impressed with their Danish prospects and are furious over what had happened, jeopardizing all the members' dream of becoming fully patched angels members. De er blevet ikke accepteret, de er ikke blevet accepteret af tyskerne, men hollænderne er sådan begyndt at være, synes, at de virker sgu egentlig okay, de der danskere. Så kommer de, så er de fuldstændig ude af kontrol på en måde, som de der hollænder virkelig ikke har brug for, de er. Øhm, så, så de bliver jo nødt til, hvad skal man sige, bagefter at lægge afstand til Søren Ulle i år, ikke? Nielsen and the others realize they have to do something in order to not lose their status as prospects. This will be solved internally. Nielsen has brought his girlfriend to the clubhouse for the first time, and she now witnesses internal justice when several members attack Soren. Jeg vil sige, at han var så farlig, så jeg tror ikke bare... Den, den mand tror jeg ikke bare, man kunne have givet en almindelig røvfuld, hvis den var. Altså, det foregik til en fest, hvor folk var fulde i forvejen, ikke? Og når folk er fulde, ikke, så kan ting udvikle sig. Så var der nogen, der ville give dem røvfuld, og den tog så overhøjt. The attack is so brutal that his face is almost completely smashed in before he is dragged out to a back alley and left there. He is found dead the next morning with Nielsen noting, We couldn't have that on us, that we had a member that behaved like that. This seems to have been satisfactory to the Germans and British angels because on New Year's Eve 1980, MC Denmark becomes Hell's Angels, the first angels chapter in the Nordic countries. They were no longer a simple biker gang. They were now members of the biggest biker club in the world, Hell's Angels. At a press conference, Blondie declares that only the clubs that work for them will be tolerated. The conflict between the two biggest and rivaling clubs in Denmark now escalates when four bullshit members walk into a local Hells Angels pub while the Angels are having a party at their headquarter in Titan Street. At a pub near Hells Angels headquarters, bullshit members sits down to drink far outside their own territory. Again, a direct provocation towards Hells Angels. It's en to tre bullshitter og sætte sig ind på et i godsøjne hoa-værshus. Det er jo det samme som at bestille sin The Hells Angels soon receive a call, and they head to the pub with several members and supporters. Blondie kills two of them with a knife and injures a third. Det var her, hvor A begynder at sige, så lærer det. Vi har været nede på Vesterbro og fortælle jer, vi vil ikke have jer, og nu fortæller vi det her også. Og vi gør det på en måde, hvor vi siger, det må koste jer over, hvad det vil for dem, der deltager. This was the incident that really caught the attention of the police and the public towards the bikers. Og der var også en, der begyndte at søge ud, som om han trak et eller andet, og så udviklede situationen så. Og så gik det galt, så var der to, der døde, og en, der blev hårdt sovet. Ikke? There could only be one dominating club in Denmark, and once petty wars and small-time skirmishes had now become deadly serious. This was undoubtedly a declaration of total war by the angels. Shit. Du ved godt, at øh, du står på en eller anden liste over... Nogen, der skal ja, myrdes, ikke? Jeg kan ikke løbe nogen steder ind og gemme mig. Det agter jeg så sandelig heller ikke, vel? Jeg kan tage ingen vej tilbage. Ikke? Alle bruger brænde og... Hvad siger din kone til det her, du har en kone? Hvad siger hun? Hun lever med i det, ikke? Mm. In an interview with Danish TV, Nielsen very much confirms Mackerel's statement. Man kan sige, at kampen mellem bikerne og rockerne var ulig i den gang. Uden at den på nogen måde var organiseret, så kan man da sige, at rockerne, de gik stadigvæk ud og slog folk ned og tog deres rygmærker. Hvor at dem, som nu efterhånden var i bikermødet, ja, de ville have det stoppet, så de slog folk ihjel. Så derfor kunne den kun ende, som den gjorde. Det, som der er vigtigt, det er, at vi har styr på landet, og det er os, der bestemmer. Vi var grove på mange måder. Jeg kunne ikke selv se det, der har stået midt i det, fordi det var, vi havde ret til det. Vi er næsten sammenlignet med, at amerikanerne synes, de har ret til at invadere et hvert land. 
når det passer dem, mens andre ikke har. Så vi var meget amerikaniseret på den måde. During the following court case, there was a media frenzy. Something like this had never happened in Denmark before, and the public was stunned over the violence that had been exerted by both clubs. In response to the double murder of their brothers, bullshit fire several shots at the Angels and their clubhouse at numerous occasions, causing an uncompromising reaction from the Angels. Jorn Nielsen volunteers to assassinate the President Mackerel, who has been identified as one of the perpetrators behind the shootings, and kills him by emptying a machine gun magazine into his body in a crippling murder. Og vi skulle afsted. Han påpeger så, at han har glemt sin pistol og klapper så i siden, hvor han plejer at have den. Jeg registrerer en lyd, der får mig til at kigge op noget usædvanligt. Da de første kugler, de smelter. Jeg mistede faktisk alt, hvad jeg havde, og hvad jeg havde opbygget igennem en del år. Og det røg sig sammen med min mand. Både mit følelsesliv og mit, mit fundament i tilværelsen, som man godt se. This assassination brought with it even more fear and media coverage, and there was no doubt who was the most violent and brutal group in the Danish underworld. Nielsen now flees to Canada and spends two years there before returning to Denmark and a 16-year sentence in prison for the murder. Check out my video for more on that. This was in reality the beginning of the end of the unorganized bullshit biker club den 1. juli 1987 sælger de tilbageværende medlemmer af Bullshit deres klubhus og nedlægger sig selv. Hells Angels står som den ubestridte vinder af den første magtkamp i det nordiske bikermiljø. When Bullshit disbanded as a club and the war ended, seven members of Bullshit had been killed, three whom were presidents, one from Hells Angels, along with three innocent people. However, during the war... Hell's Angels in Denmark's numbers had been reduced by 50% and had now only nine members left. This was due to internal conflicts and power struggles, where several members had been kicked out and left in bad standing. But many of those left were now also locked up, serving long prison terms. Det er Carlo, Gøyler, Hamster, Blondie, Dirty, Hans, Jens, Jynke, der er på flugt, Middelbo og Mucho. Af dem er de tre i fængsel. The years after the war marked the zenith of Hell's Angels, Denmark's power, and the club would now spread out to the other Nordic countries, imposing their power brutally everywhere they went. Nevertheless, the new regime that now was imposed wasn't seen favorably by all biker clubs, something that would inevitably spark a reaction. The Hell's Angels um, have always a period of assessment. They're always assessing the the newcomers to see if they're worthwhile becoming to the big organization and uh of course some people who who, who dream all their life to be Hells angels when they're being rejected some of them would just go away retired and whatnot but others who won't won't accept that will go and join the other group who... Virebro's hardcore was former friends and supporters of the angels when they became Saturdera after being denied entry to the club. Hell's Angels Denmark had won their first war, and this war was the only one of their so far four wars, where they had a clear and decisive victory. De er ikke så upopulære. Og det er fordi de forestiller noget, vi kan genkende, og som vi på en måde idealiserer. Nemlig en, en enkelt samfundsforståelse. Jeg og mine passer på hinanden. To explain the brutality and violence that comes with the club, Jorn Nielsen has a surprisingly honest reflection and admission. Man can also say that in our community, there are many members of our community who have a heavy temperament, can you say. And so there are maybe some who are not well formulated or don't want to discuss a lot. And so I would say, as one of those who can formulate me, what is it? You can't just think at folk kan slippe afsted med psykisk vold, eller sidde og svine andre mennesker til på groveste vis, og så tro, der ikke kommer en reaktion den anden vej. For nogen, som ikke evner at komme med en, en, hvad, hvad kan man sige, en reaktion i form af ord. Men... 
Remember to hit that like and subscribe buttons as if you were the union attempting to become Hell's Angels. And please check out my other videos to see if there are others you find interesting. And I hope to see you in the next one.